Who doesn't love listening to their favorite tracks while out on their daily run? But have you ever wondered how the artists you love are getting paid by Apple, Spotify, and other streaming services? Or maybe you're a musician and you're thinking, hey, wait, how am I getting paid? In this episode, we're gonna take a look at the two different payment models currently used by streaming services to pay out their artists, uh, or the artists streaming music on the service so that you, music lover, can make an informed decision about which service, uh, streaming service may best uh, support your artists, and of course, for you musicians out there, so you know which streaming platform you may want to send your fans to to ensure that you are getting paid fairly. Let's go. On the 1st of April, 2021, SoundCloud became the first streaming platform to roll out user-centric royalties, or in their language, fan-powered royalties. Thus, taking a different approach to the standard pro rata system used by all other streaming services. Did what I just say sound like... Let me explain. The default payment model used by Spotify and other streaming services is called a pro rata system, also known as a market-centric or market-centered payment system. To demonstrate how it works, I've employed the services of Brock O'Lee, who's not as big a fan of the old Celtic jigs and reels as you might think, and Kelly Flower, who, despite her sweet name, has dark taste in music. Both of them pay $10 a month to stream unlimited music. Brock loves The Shape of Ed Sheeran, and so listens to nothing but. However, Kelly can only find peace listening to Dark Tranquility. During the previous month, Brock listened to Ed Sheeran 18 times. But due to forces of the occult messing up that good 5G signal, Kelly only managed to listen to Dark Tranquility twice. Under the default pro rata system, all subscriber money goes into a royalty pool and each artist receives a percentage of that pool, which is equal to the percentage that their songs were streamed for that period. In this case, Ed Sheeran received 90% of total streams while Dark Tranquility only received 10%. Thus, the pool will be split accordingly. $18 for Ed Sheeran and $2 for Dark Tranquility. This upsets Kelly because Ed Sheeran gives her the shivers, not the good kind. So she never listens to him, but still, he gets 90% of her money, money that she pays to listen to real music. That's a direct quote from her, by the way. So as you can see, under the default pro rata system, top artists take the most money, which you know makes sense, but they're also taking money from people who don't listen to their music. This does not make sense. So what about user-centric royalties? Well, in a user-centric payment system, which SoundCloud has rolled out, the user's money is divided up and paid out proportionally to only the artist that that user listened to during that period. So now let's adjust the royalty payouts using the user-centric approach before Kelly casts an evil curse on all of mankind. So as you can see, Despite the fact that Ed Sheeran got 90% of all streams, because they were all from Brock, Ed only gets the money that Brock paid. Now, meanwhile, Dark Tranquility gets all of the money that Kelly Flower paid because they were all she listened to during that period. Thus, the money from each listener directly supports their favorite artists rather than also supporting other artists they may not even like. Many people see user-centric royalties as a much fairer approach because we as consumers are then technically only paying for the music we consume. And this also means that artists are paid only by the people who listen to them. Kind of like in the good old days when you used to buy an album, buy an artist in a store. You know, that money wasn't divvied up among all the other artists on the planet according to how many people were or weren't buying their albums. And you could listen to as much or as little as you want, and it didn't affect the price you paid for the album. Now, obviously, 
I've simplified a very complex financial system. However, the result is effectively the same. Rather than putting all money into a single pool and distributing it according to total percentage of streams, as is the current practice, a user-centric payment system means that each listener essentially has a royalty pool, which is then split up according to that user's streams for that period. There's some debate about how much difference a switch to this model will make. With the likes of major publishing companies like UMG and streaming companies like Spotify and Apple saying that it won't make much of a difference to Deezer, the French streaming service that has been pushing user-centered royalties since back in, I think, 2017 is when they first gave a keynote speech about it. And SoundCloud, of course, who is doing it and has some real-world data to back it up. Now, the results of a study produced by the Centre National de la Musique in France, my apologies to any French listening for that pronunciation, indicated that a user-centric approach would largely shift the balance between genres rather than leading to a significant shift in payouts to artists. This means that the largest genres, rap and hip-hop, would see a reduction in royalty revenue while genres like classical, blues and metal would see an increase in royalty revenues, sort of balancing things out a bit. And what this means for the big players like Universal Music Group, WMG, so on and so forth, is that they're not wrong. Not much is likely to change for them under a UCPS or user-centric payment system because their catalogs are quite expansive, covering most genres of music. Plus, if one of their big names gets fewer royalties, but their less popular artists get more royalties, well, it kind of balances out, doesn't it? Now, for larger artists, artists like Ed Sheeran, Drake, Kanye, yeah, they would earn significantly fewer royalties, but considering the sheer dominance they display in the streaming market, it is unlikely that the royalty hit would be that significant to their overall earnings. It would just more accurately reflect who listens to their music and how much. Now, the study by the CNM indicated that artists, you know, from 100 to 10,000, the top 100th to 10,000th artists could see benefits from $2,500 to $9,000 per year in terms of a royalty boost, let's say, under the user-centric uh, payment system. To a top 100 artist, of course, guys like Ed Sheeran, Kanye, and so on, this is peanuts. But for smaller artists, this could be a sizable shift in their income. Now, the study also says that the shift for artists outside of the top 10,000 would see an increase of around $10 per year with user-centric royalties. A point to make here, though, is that this is an average based on all of the artists outside the top 10,000 that have released music across the streaming platforms. Some of these artists have released one track, never done any promotion. Many have no followers and very few, if any, listens. Thus, this figure is highly skewed and I expect that those artists closer to, let's say, the top 10,000 artists would still see significant revenue gains under a user-centric payment system relative to the current payment system. But enough of what I think. Let's see what SoundCloud and SoundCloud artists have to say on the matter. SoundCloud's first example, Vincent, goes from $120 a month to earning $600 a month in royalties, a difference of $480. Now, for an artist like Drake or Taylor Swift, $480, chump change. But for an independent artist like Vincent, this is a huge boost. It's like the difference between eating Wonder Bread all month or, you know, eating good old healthy whole grain bread. So at the very least, user-centric royalties could lead to healthier artists. Now, while Vincent saw a 500% increase in royalty revenue, Chevy, she'll only double her royalty earnings under the user-centric model. Unfortunately, SoundCloud didn't indicate before or after earnings, but regardless, doubling any amount of royalties, even if it's from $2 a month to $4 a month, could be enough to keep an artist's spirit going, and that is worth something. Plus, over time, with more releases and a larger fan base, those royalties 
will most likely increase. The most recent example, a cover of ABBA's SOS, released by Portishead previously only through video, was released then through SoundCloud's user-centric model, and it has apparently earned 500% more royalties than it would have under the default pro rata system. As SoundCloud says, full aggregation of market live payout data is pending over the coming months, but the model is tracking as expected and the Portis head stat is a strong confirmation of the model's design, fan engagement driving meaningful revenue. Now, Portis head founder Jeff Barrow told Pitchfork that fan powered royalties are a real opportunity for people who want to support artists. I didn't expect huge amounts of people to listen to SOS. It was more about getting the idea out that you could stream music and it could make money. You know, it's the difference between being able to order a pizza and someone actually paying the rent. And if we look at the response from SoundCloud artists since the launch of Fan Powered Royalties, it appears to be quite positive as well. So, what's the conclusion? I think that it is a fairer model overall as the money I spend will go to the artists I listen to, not Bieber, not Drake, or Taylor Swift. And that just seems, I don't know, logical. Now, time will tell how this model will perform compared to the market-centric payment system, the current system used by all other streaming services. But I think that the user-centric payment system needs more time in the real world with a larger pool of artists. And hopefully, we'll see more come from Deezer about this in the future as their implementation would also include major label releases. Based on what you've seen, do you think that user-centric royalties are the way to go or not worth the effort? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you like what you saw or you know what you see, give that like button a tap, costs you nothing, but lets me know that you did like this video. Thank you so much for watching and till next time. Cheers.